Welcome to the Get Woke Go Broke Master List for September 2021. There will be a timestamp on screen and in the description if you want to get straight to the list. But first, the rules. Deciding on what is woke and broke will be up to my subjective interpretation. An objective measure of wokeness doesn't work as they either have too many false positives or allow too many games to slip through the cracks. A definitive objective measure of broke is also difficult. Financial and sales data on a game has to be volunteered by the developers or publisher, which they are unlikely to do if the game was a failure. Even when they do present that information, it can be spun in various ways. Best selling game on the PS5 makes sense, but often you will see headlines like fastest selling game on the PS5. What does fastest selling mean exactly? Well, it doesn't really seem to mean anything. They can also say things like best selling exclusive third person action game of the year so far. How many exclusive third person action games are released on a console a year? Likely not many. We can't use chart positions either because that depends on what other kind of games are out that week. We can't use absolute seals because a game selling a million copies means nothing if it needs to sell 5 million to break even. We can't even use critical reception because game journalists have been notoriously corrupt since 2007 or so. So I have to judge the brokenness based on general consensus or by comparisons to previous games in a series or similar games. Now, onto the list. Subnautica Below Zero The main character of Subnautica 1 was a faceless, nameless, silent protagonist. It was apparently possible to see his face, but it was not a focus of the game or the marketing. During the development of Subnautica 1, the developers mentioned wanting to change the main character to a woman in the name of diversity, but decided against it. The sequel's main character is a black woman whose face is shown all over the marketing. The game left early access in May 2021. The forums were full of complaints, bugs, crashes, a lack of content, fewer biomes than the original, and a terrible cliffhanger ending as cited as the main problems with the game. Mandalore Gaming Sometime at the end of March, early April, Vinesource Vinny was accused of sexual abuse. Mandalore Gaming jumped on the bandwagon and promoted the accusations in a tweet. When the accusations turned out to be false, Mandalore apologised, deleted the original tweet and posted a lengthy Google Doc explaining why he went along with it. While his old videos would often pull in 1 to 3 million views each, his recent videos have pulled in 300,000 to 500,000 views. Watch Dogs Legion While Watch Dogs 2 wasn't woke per se, it did feature cringy San Francisco hipsters as the main characters. It sold 80% less than Watch Dogs 1. Watch Dogs Legion is set in post-Brexit London, from what I've read, the game itself never mentions Brexit by name, but it's fairly obvious what it's supposed to be. One of the villains is named Nigel, likely as a reference to Nigel Farage. The game sold 54% less than Watch Dogs 2 and dropped in price in less than a month. The Last of Us 2 Where to start with The Last of Us 2? There are people who've made hours long videos detailing what happened with the development, release and gameplay of this game. But the short version is, footage of the game leaked early. There was speculation that this was from a disgruntled employee. The leaks revealed that the main character of the first game was killed off by the game's new hero, a transsexual Mary Sue called Abby. Female characters were made uglier than real people they were supposed to be based on including one character that was given smaller breasts despite supposedly being pregnant in the game. Someone working for Naughty Dog or Sony decided the best way to respond to these leaks and to criticism of the game was to file false DMCA claims. I could go on, but let's get to the broke side of things. The Last of Us 2 got high scores from the press, despite user reviews being extremely negative. 
The PlayStation Store had 700 five-star reviews before the game was even released. It won various awards, even beating more popular, well-received games like Half-Life Alex, Ghosts of Tsushima and Final Fantasy VII Remake. The Last of Us 2 sold 4 million copies day one, but long-term sales numbers haven't been released and Sony hasn't said if the game was profitable or not as far as I know. But the planned story DLC was cancelled. In contrast, Ghosts of Tsushima sold more than 5 million copies, was discussed longer and repeatedly got press as it hit sales milestones and has story DLC. According to one forum post, during the Black Friday sales, shops were cleared out of most games but The Last of Us 2 still sat on the shelf. Sony was still pushing The Last of Us 2 six months after release with new trailers on their official channel. Said trailers were getting lots of dislikes. A year after release, games journalists are still trying to defend the game from criticism. Resident Evil 3 Remake after the success and popularity of Resident Evil 2 Remake, especially the way Mr X would hunt you down throughout the game, a remake of Resident Evil 3 was made in the same style. Jill was given a less revealing outfit and her personality was changed to make her angry and bitchy. Resident Evil 3 Remake was widely disliked. A number of problems were cited such as the lack of content with large sections of the original game being removed and the removal of branching paths that helped the original's replayability. Some time after this a PowerPoint presentation at Capcom was leaked talking about how Capcom should go walk citing The Last of Us 2 as a positive example to follow though there was no evidence if this talk was given or if it was ever acted on. XCOM Chimera Squad after the popularity of XCOM Enemy Unknown and XCOM 2, people were looking forward to XCOM 3, which, based on the cliffhanger ending of XCOM 2, seemed to imply that it would be a terror from the deep type of game. Instead, we got a budget game about a squad of fixed characters, said characters being the usual assortment of Burger King, Kids Club, quirky and diverse characters that everybody hates. While the gameplay was praised for some additions like the breach mode, the game was largely panned by fans of the series and seemed to serve as a way to test ideas for the real XCOM 3. The Outer Worlds, a long awaited sci-fi RPG from Obsidian that got woke. Most if not all the female characters are ugly, with masculine features and short hair. The character creator will often give randomised female characters beards. There is an alleged bug in character creation where choosing a pale skin tone will make your character darker in game. This bug was not fixed last I checked. A computer in the game talks about personal pronouns and a quest line involves an asexual date. The game is said to have a strong anti-capitalist slant but you can side with the corporations if you wish and some of the anti-corporation factions aren't exactly the good guys either. Despite getting a lot of praise from critics the game as a whole is often considered a disappointment. The DLC that was released is widely considered subpar as well. Lab Zero Games Developers Lab Zero Games made their name with the popular fighting game Skullgirls. Years after release they censored the game, removing panty shots. Lab Zero claimed these were part of general art improvements. Their next game, Indivisible, was delayed and barely got any fanfare when it did release. The owner of Lab Zero Games was accused of creating an unsafe work environment and the employees quit. As a result, Indivisible was abandoned, with people complaining on the Steam forums that promised Kickstarter features weren't in the game. Wolfenstein Youngbloods When Machine Games rebooted Wolfenstein, people liked it. The add-on All Blood was also well received. The second game had a mixed reception and around that time the devs were talking about US politics in interviews. Young Bloods was meant to take the ideas of the reboot and make them co-op. The game starred BJ's daughters, which the game presented as quirky, but come across as psychopathic and annoying. The game was full of technical problems and gameplay problems, with some complaining that the alternative 1980 setting was wasted. The gamer's video, The Tragedy of Young Bloods, failed to mention the hatred of the lead characters, but it was mentioned in the comments. 
Battlefield 5. The trailer for this supposedly authentic World War II multiplayer shooter featured a female amputee with face paint running around the battlefield, killing Nazis with a cricket bat wrapped in barbed wire. The game was widely mocked for this, to which the developers responded by saying they were going to keep making games that are inclusive and diverse, adding, if you don't like it, don't buy it. So people didn't buy it. With the game selling less than half the copies of the previous Battlefield game and ultimately failed to meet sales expectations. Agents of Mayhem This sequel to the popular Saints Row series reimagined the Saints Street Gang as a G.I. Joe-like military organisation. I liked the idea even if others didn't. The game itself was bad, being a stiff third person shooter with a mostly annoying cast of characters, like a Muslim ninja and a buff woman with a minigun and roller skirts. Ukulele and a Hat in Time Ukulele was a crowdfunded game that was supposed to be a throwback to old school collect em up platformers like Banjo Kazooie. The game was to feature a cameo by JonTron. After JonTron said something controversial on a podcast, the devs bent the knee to the outrage mob and removed his cameo from the game. The game went on to be considered a disappointment by fans, failing to capture the elements that made the old games great. Later that year, A Hat in Time, another crowdfunded retro collect em up platformer was released. It too had a John Tron cameo, but when the cancel culture mob demanded the cameo be removed, the devs stood their ground. The game was well received by fans. However, when it came time for the DLC, the devs decided to hide a bunch of transgender flags throughout the DLC. The DLC was largely considered a disappointment, with fans complaining about a lack of content. Lawbreakers, a field multiplayer shooter that took pride in its inclusion of gender neutral toilets. Dishonored 2 The original game was a success, a return to semi open world immersive sims where you're tasked with assassinating various people. For the DLC, the developers said they took advice from Anita Sarkeesian, a radical feminist who made YouTube videos complaining about sexism in games. The DLC was largely considered middling as far as I can tell. The sequel doubled down on feminism, having the male main character of the original be upstaged by a female lead who is much more powerful, but I hear you mix things about that. The user reviews complained about poor optimization. The sequel sold 38% of the original game's sales. Baldur's Gate Siege of Dragonspear an expansion pack for an almost 20 year old RPG, it included a transgender shopkeeper in a world where items to change your gender are available, and the game includes some jabs at Gamergate. The game was not well received, with players citing a number of bugs. Uncharted 4 While the Uncharted games were well liked, especially 2 and 3, Uncharted 4 went walk. Supposedly, the lead writer, a woman, was kicked out in favour of a man who changed her script to be less sexist, changing Drake's son to be a daughter and including a black female villain you can't hit. I don't know if Drake lying to his wife is out of character as I never played the other games, but I've seen that accusation on the internet. <laughs> Nice try. I gave you that one. Freebie. Come here. Now hand me the artifact. Mass Effect Andromeda. Likely the most famous game on this list aside from maybe The Last of Us 2. Mass Effect Andromeda was released with so many problems. Gameplay glitches, dumb AI, and a badly written story meant that the game was a mess. But it's most famous for its animations, or lack of them. From facial animations that often didn't work, to fist fights that seemed more like slap fights. While all this seemed to imply that the game was basically unfinished at release, the devs did have time to beat all the female characters with the ugly stick, while making the male characters attractive, and including a character who talks about being transsexual within 30 seconds of meeting them. And of course, they included the same tough talking woman with a side shave haircut that seems to be in every other walk game. Like The Last of Us 2, 
there's hours of videos and blog posts talking about what's wrong with the game but I think it's best summarised by a character in a cutscene holding a gun backwards. The game sold so poorly that pallets of new games were found at local Goodwills making it sort of a modern version of E.T. for the Atari 2600. Finally, I want to mention a few things that didn't make it into the list proper, but I also felt should kind of be included in this video. First, the Saints Row reboot. The remake slash reboot of Saints Row seems to continue what Agents of Mayhem started, with what looks like a cast of insufferable San Francisco hipsters, complete with a butch woman with a side shave haircut. The plot? Disenfranchised millennials turn to crime to put food on the table, feel part of the community, and to pay off their student loans. Yes, really, that's supposedly the plot of the game. One of the devs supposedly said, Diversity was important, and there was an explicit focus on making the team producing the game as diverse as the characters in it, and that the original games were very much of their time, with tastes and attitudes having moved on. I'll be surprised if this game manages to surpass Saints Row 3 in reception and seals. The Assassin's Creed series. I don't know much about the Assassin's Creed games after Assassin's Creed 2 Brotherhood since that's the last one I played. People seem to like Black Flag but from what I understand the series went walk a while ago. I don't know if they went broke compared to previous entries but they're clearly popular enough to keep making. My lack of knowledge on the series means I can't be sure of any of these complaints. From what I understand, accusations include various historical inaccuracies like Egyptians being black and gender neutral schools. Apparently one game even admits that it changed historical facts in order to be more in line with modern values. Mortal Kombat. Like Assassin's Creed, I don't know much about the Mortal Kombat games. The fan base generally seems to be angry about something or other so I don't know if wokeness is part of that. One thing I do know is that one of the games apparently cut the OK hand sign after falling for the 4chan prank that claimed that the OK hand sign was a white power symbol. I think they also covered up female characters as well but I can't be sure of that and I don't know how the games performed compared to the others. Various MMOs a few MMOs have gotten woke and went broke, but as with Assassin's Creed and Mortal Kombat, I don't follow MMOs enough to know. The most famous one that I know of is Wildstar, a game that had many problems, but instead of fixing those problems, they decided to focus on things like reducing female characters' breast sizes. The game was eventually shut down. Other MMOs like Bless Online and Hyper Universe supposedly had similar controversies before eventually shutting down. One of the few that I do know of is Sudden Attack 2 and that one is interesting to me because the game was around for less than 90 days before being shut down. In that time the two lead female characters were cut from the game due to complaints about over sexualization. As an aside, I notice how all the articles about over-sexualisation of Sudden Attack 2 say that it was gamers who complained, which I doubt given that gamers have had no problems with sexy women in games before or since, so I don't know why gamers would choose that one game to be offended by. Translations. Over the years, various Japanese games were censored during the translation process. Standouts include Fire Emblem Fates, where scenes were completely changed in order to include memes and cringy writing. The same thing happened to Neo The World Ends With You, with scenes rewritten to include current memes like Among Us or changing a character to be obsessed with money. Tokyo Mirage Sessions was censored to the point of removing a character's pelvis, resulting in the Vagina Bones meme. The game was apparently re-released on the Switch, but the worldwide release was based on the censored version. Nintendo Japan apologised and issued refunds. The Wii U version of Project Zero Maiden of Dark Water removed the swimsuit outfits from the game, and Dead or Alive Extreme 3 didn't get a Western release, despite there already being an English version available. There are lots of examples of varying degrees of severity. 
patched in walknuts. There are a few games that released in a standard state but were later patched to be censored. These can't really be counted because their success or failure usually comes before going walk. Skullgirls being an example I already mentioned where panty shots were removed from some animations something like a year after the game's release. Devil May Cry 5 added light shining out of a character's arse to cover said arse and Deadly Premonition 2 supposedly rewrote a trans character after receiving complaints. Guru Larry has a video about patched in censorship which might be worth a watch if you're interested in that kind of thing. And finally there are games I left out for various reasons that I might as well mention. Battleborn was included in my previous list but the only source for that game being Woke is a single Vice article and I have no clue about Battleborn anyway so I cut it. Mafia 3 and Prey 2 aren't included because I don't think they're Woke. A game is not Woke simply because it doesn't have a straight white male lead. I only consider it Woke in cases like Dishonored 2 and Youngbloods because they deliberately sidelined the established characters in favour of diversity characters. Just adding a quick detail in editing. Another game I want to add into the honourable mentions is Deathloop. I've not played Deathloop and it's a game that I wouldn't consider walk but at the same time it is very suspicious to me because the game has been rendered criticism proof and anyone who does criticise the game is accused of being a racist who doesn't want black people in games. Phew, that was a long video, but I think that's about everything. Hopefully I won't have to update this video. My prediction is that social justice is a fad in the same way the hippie movement was. While wokeness will never completely go away, I think its time in the limelight is coming to an end. I originally predicted 2023 or thereabouts would be when it would no longer be mainstream, but due to the COVID pandemic putting everything on hold for a couple of years, I instead predict sometime around 2025. We're already seeing this change. More and more companies are refusing to bend the knee and social justice is now attacking its own. Lab Zero was mentioned in this video, but Blizzard, Riot and other companies that once preached diversity and inclusion are being attacked by the outrage mobs and they aren't taking it well. But getting into that is beyond the scope of this video. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.